Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Men's Comics, and here we are kicking off that weekly comic book market trend video. That's right. This is the three up, three down. We're giving you three hot, three cold trends for this week. But Jack, how's your week been going so far? So far, so good, Brian. A lot of new things on the horizon, and we got a few of them to talk about this week. A lot of new ideas, some of them very bad, are becoming very big in the market. Yeah. Crazy week, man. I'm nowhere here talking about comics, but kids with their online school, me with a new job within the past month. It's just been crazy. But that's why we're here to talk comics because it's our escape from all of it. Yes. So we're getting into those trends right now, starting with the three up. And the first one we're talking about is Dylan Brock seems to be up and hot again. Yeah. Now, this show we're recording on Tuesday night. So it airs Wednesday. I'm going to go ahead and put this out there spoilers if you have not read venom don't don't and you don't want to be spoiled by something you might want to skip ahead of it but um spoilers have leaked online for tomorrow's issue of venom 28 which gives the identities of both virus and codex um and with codex you're finding out that it is a adult version seemingly from another universe or something of dylan and this gets anyone who's invested in Dylan excited because it really gives credence to the fact that this is a character who has now a, a, the ability to be able to project a long-term future because you could now kind of feature him in stories as an adult now, feature him as a child, or see him grow up to become uh, Codex in the future. So if you were invested in Dylan, this gives you uh, a, a more of a reason to feel sound about it. Uh, we're seeing prices immediately spike just with the, the like – this was literally somebody spoiled preview pages over a YouTube channel. Um, and just that alone has sent people buy uh, copies. So it, it, once the mass public is aware, as they probably are, as you're watching this now, uh, you should see a major effect. And then, of course, Brian and I love to talk about exclusive variants. Uh, Brian's got his exclusive variants.com shirt on right now. And one of the things that's interesting is we actually saw an exclusive variant make a move in the market as the Unknown Comics Venom number 10 variant, which is now looked at as the first cover appearance of Dylan Brock, uh, was on fire. Yeah, moving to the next one. This one's a good one to talk about because we love this is one of our favorite videos to do and that's the last call every friday we have the last call video and we're talking about foc and it seems foc on youtube is a big comic book market trend right now yeah you're seeing more and more foc shows pop up now some are called previews shows um you know some are pre-order shows or pull shows but you're seeing more and more you're seeing comic book youtube channels talk about comics pre-foc and this is important because, believe it or not, there was a time when other than, shout out Spidey Fan, a, a, uh, and this is no shot at him, a lesser known YouTuber who um, was doing these FOC shows way, way back before we even thought about it. We weren't even aware. Um, and as soon as we dropped ours, people said, you know, hey, Spidey Fan's been doing this and he puts out a great show. Um, but when we did it, we were immediately told, having kind of the size of platform that we were starting to get, um, that we were crazy, that we were going to ruin the market. It was going to be the worst thing for comics. Nobody was going to be able to speculate. Yeah, or at that time, the hot thing on YouTube was everyone talking about us ruining the market and the comic right. book hobby with FOC. Right, right. And we were told immediately, um, Something's Killing the Children, number one, was one of the first books that we talked about on the, the new show. Um, and we were told we ruined that book and that that book would never see secondary market value. Thank you, haters. Right. And you see where that is now, right? Um, all those $5 comic cops who want to tell you, you know, where to spend your money and how you should spend your money and what you should talk about and what you shouldn't talk about. We won that war. I feel very confident in saying that. Um, the last call show is still up and running. It has grown. Um, it is now widely accepted by the market. Yes, there are still some speculators who don't like the idea of talking about things before. Even speculators. FOC. Right, the speculators. But the reality is publishers appreciate it, creators appreciate it, um, retailers appreciate it. It is a, a piece of content that really can help grow the comic market as a whole. Um, 
And I'm glad to be honest with you, because we've gotten this question. Okay. Um, since we've been kind of labeled the FOC guys, we've gotten the question as other channels and some of them are predominant big channels have popped up with their new shows. How do we feel about it? And you know what, to be honest with you, we think it's great. We have no issue with it. We invite every YouTube channel to do an FOC show. That doesn't bother us. At the end of the day, whether they're doing previews of every single issue coming out of um, the previews magazine, or whether or not they're highlighting it the way that we do, or whether or not they're talking about their personal polls, or however they structure it, we don't have any problem with that. We think that's awesome. Uh, again, FOC is such an important function of the comic book market. The fact that people are talking about it, the fact that awareness is raising to yeah, FOC. Yeah, supports the hobby. That's support, what's more right. important. And that's the whole reason we did it, right? The whole reason we did it. It wasn't for views or clicks. We had honestly no idea when we started that show whether or not it was going to be successful. And to be honest with you, even today, it's maybe our third or fourth most successful show. Um but it, it is important because it, it helps to move copies at the comic shops. And, and at the end of the day, um, that's good for the hobby. Yeah. And I'm going to take that a step further and also, because there's a bunch of people out there that are wanting to start a YouTube or have just started a YouTube or have a smaller YouTube channel. And sometimes they feel like, Hey, I don't want to create this. If, if it's something you want to create and people are hating on it, don't listen to them. Create it anyways. Yes. You're one of one. Even if there's 10 other, I'll say 50 other channels doing the same exact video, you're one of one. Create what you want to create. No one else can be the same person you are. You add your own spin on it. You put your own personality into it. Don't listen to anyone else. You create what you want to create. And if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, do it. There's room in this community for everyone. People are going to comment. Just ignore them and move on and do what you want to do like we said one of one no one can steal your shine and with that we're moving into that last one the hot and we are talking about man this is a bad idea yeah so i talked about this in the intro that uh some bad ideas look like genius ideas today and uh and certainly we've been talking about bad ideas now they've been on this show before right we've talked about this publisher coming from dinesh shamsani adam freeman uh Jeff Lemire, Matt Kent, Louis LaRosa, so many big names involved. Um, so many of the names that were involved and integral in that relaunch of Valiant Comics, which went from kind of forgotten brand to kind of a hot indie brand for a few years. Uh, and now they're taking all of that into the space of creator own. And we talked about this hero trade number one on the Bolo Show last week. I'm sure you've heard about it by now, but to give you the quick rundown, a book was sent... Uh, in early September to comic shops. Uh, it was just a single book, very little information on the book. It just a black and white comic uh, with an email address, a Gmail address, a matter of fact, to reorder more copies for $3, shipping included. Um, and only out of the 100 stores that were selected and sent this book, only five, five chose to reorder copies. And those stores all thought that this was a self-published comic, right? This was super small press so they were having faith in just having read the book and thought it was good well, what they didn't know was from superstar writer matt kent it was from you know all-star publishers dinesh shamdasani and adam freeman and here you have this book that is now the talk of the secondary market what's the most recent price we've seen brian like 700 and something dollars yeah, it's crazy for this thing i mean it, and it doesn't surprise me right because it's a scarcity issue um, there's, like I said, five stores ordered more than the one free copy. You're probably looking at less than 200 copies in circulation. Um, this is going to happen, especially when you're talking about a creator own Matt Kitten title. Um, and the TV connections that Dinesh has with, uh, you know, his Hive Bind Productions company, what they're doing with Witcher, what they've got upcoming with Gideon Falls, um, what they did with the Bloodshot movie. Um, so, I think that I've been bullish on bad idea. I think bad idea is a good idea. I love the idea. Brian, you and I like to think of ourselves as market disruptors, right? We were talking about, we did the FOC show. We didn't really care uh, what the reaction was going to be. We knew what it was going to come. I, I look at Dinesh and bad idea in that same way. They're, they're market disruptors. They want to create a buzz and they did it. Um, they certainly did it. And uh, I give them kudos for being able to be long-term sighted to be able to see that while we may have lost money on sales in the short term of this black and white copy of this 
one comic issue, I guarantee you comic shops are going to have bad idea titles on their radar going forward. Not only that, I think it was a genius marketing idea because we talked about bad, bad idea at the beginning of the year, pre COVID, we talked about how their marketing plan. We talked about, hey, do we think it's a good idea or a bad idea? The way that it was gonna, only going to be a brick and mortars. You can, you know, they can order as many as they wanted. It wasn't a limited print run. And then the pandemic hit, and we're like, man, how's this going to affect them? I think this was a great pivot. I mean, I think it, it, it definitely put them on the radar, especially yes. created a collectible right out the right out the right out the bat. So, uh, like you said, people are aware of who it is. At least people within the comic market, because it's just making the rounds right now. So. Definitely, and let us know in the comments if you guys were able to get a copy of this. But those are the three up, and we're going to shift now into the three down. And the first one for the downward trend this week is Walking Dead. We could talk about Walking Dead being down for the shows being canceled. We can talk about the books. We can talk about a bunch of stuff. But full disclosure, when they're down, I'm still buying them up. Yeah, so my man Brian was throwing haymakers in the comment section of anybody who was trying to hate on our belief that actually Walking Dead is an amazing buying opportunity right now. Um, and if you're immediately going to come at us with the show got canceled, yeah, we know that. Um, that's It's everywhere, we know. But there's also the Daryl and Carol spinoff. There's also the Rick movies. There's also the Michonne movies. There's also the Perpetuity. fact that Right, spinoff series in the perpetuity that you mentioned. That is the big one. So how many – my children have seen The Office, have watched every episode. That show was off air far before my children were uh, – my oldest was ever in an age where she could sit down and watch that. Um, but why does she know every joke and every reference from The Office? Well, not only is it because – I'm a good parent, but because <laughs> she uh, – that which is debatable, but – because she, uh, you know, she's watching a show that is now timeless because of Netflix, because of streaming. And Walking Dead, I think, is going to be that type of a show where it's going to forever live and exist in, on streaming platforms. Now, that streaming platform may change with deals and, and contracts and um, those things may move, but it'll always exist. And, and you and I have really hypothesized, Brian, that people are going to find it over time. Every generation, every 10 years, there's going to be a new discovery of The Walking Dead and people are going to fall in love with it all over again. And the original parts and Shane and, 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 and the whole you know, dynamic with him and Rick and um, you know, Carl and Herschel and all of that. And that is going to bring attention to these comics where – They'll be affordable compared to what they were because all of these books have just dropped in price. They're on the downside because the market is reacting negatively. And it's like a stock. The time to sell a stock is never during the free fall. I mean, you're just going to lose money. And that's what you're seeing from people who are jumping out of Walking Dead comics right now. But if you missed Walking Dead, which most of us did, now let's be honest, 99% of us out here missed walking dead. that's why heard, they went for so much money <laughs> right i've heard so many people brag about how on top of walking dead they are nobody was i mean there's only a select few seven thousand people were i guess yeah we're on it like Roughly. that the reality is most of us missed it most of us jumped on as it got popular we were reacting which again is why the, the re-release of the walking dead deluxe series is cool where we're getting monthly comics, again, retelling these stories in full color. I think that's going to re-get readership interested on top of all of the televised programming that they've got, movies and everything else they've got going on, and the perpetuity that we talked about. The fact that these things are down market, and seemingly they just continue to free fall, I'm looking at this as poss a possibility for serious long-term investment as these characters become iconic and generational. Yeah, and I mean, it's fine to disagree with someone's opinion. Just don't sit oh, yeah. them flat out wrong. I was like, that, that doesn't work in any of the part of this. I mean, you can't sit there and tell someone's wrong for what they want to collect. And that's part of the reason why I took exception in the comments. It's telling flat out wrong. Hey, you might not agree with our opinion, but that doesn't mean we're wrong. That'd be like me telling people that like the Rick and Morty comics. Well, yeah, you're stupid collecting a cartoon. I would never do that. That's what the comic hobby's for. People collect what they always say, buy what you like. If you don't like Walking Dead, don't buy it. But at the same time, don't sit there and point your finger and say you're wrong while you're sitting there chasing Thor number seven, 18th print, thinking that that's going to put your kids through college. But well, it's, all, it's also one of the tough things because we're, we're, we're talking in terms of the distant future, right? 
So uh, our prediction is that this is going to happen. Somebody can disagree, but at the end of the day, we're both guessing to the future. Yep. Neither of us knows. No one has a crystal ball. Right. Exactly. And like I said, Thor number seven, eighteenth print might put your kids to college. Who knows? <laughs> Highly doubt it, though. But either way, the next one on the cold is we are talking about. Jack kind of mentioned at the top of the show about the Dylan Brock thing. If you haven't read it, don't listen. But we're talking about advanced spoilers being cold. Yeah, man. Uh, the, Don Keats has been hot about this again lately. Um, we've seen these PDFs that go to the stores. Um, I think it's a big question of these PDFs. Like, should should the creators send them to stores early? Now, again, why do they send them to stores? Because they want to give the stores the heads up. Great buzz. Yeah, but it's not even, I don't even think it's done initially to create buzz. I really think it's the real true reason this was Let done. Let them know which ones to sell for $28. For <laughs> That's what the result, I think the intention originally was, again, LCSs are the lifeblood of our hobby. If there's going to be an issue, we always hear complaints from LCSs. One of the things that they would always say to publishers would be, um, if you're going to have a first appearance, let us know, like tip us off how to, so we can react to this so we can prepare for this. Um, and comic publishers have tried to work with, with, um, retailers to let them know when big events are going to happen. Um, for a long time, like Dan Didio, when he was in charge of DC would hold like almost like zoom calls with retailers where he would do this like video and he would talk about the upcoming books and which books were going to be really important and what events it's so he'd give spoilers, but there was always kind of this unwritten rule within retailers that you kind of, you know, first rule of fight club is you don't talk about fight club. Like you keep that to yourself. Um, the publishers are sharing that information. The problem is as diamond account access gets kind of easier and easier. And as more and more people are, um, jumping into this business without the same level of respect for the business. You're starting to see PDFs get shared in speculation groups. You're starting to get them, get, see them get shared on YouTube channels. Um, this is detrimental. We've talked about this before. We've talked about this a few different times in a few different shows. It's detrimental to the hobby in general when people do that. Um, because while as an investor, yes, I want to know that information as soon as possible. I have to admit that, right? I'd be lying to you if I didn't say that knowing an identity of a character a day early can't benefit me financially. It absolutely can. But the same way we're talking about FOC show, what Brian and I have really tried to make kind of one of our mantras is that with the overall health of the hobby provides for all of us that if, if it, the hobby is healthy, then we all can. And same way Brian's saying, like, there's enough room. If you want to do YouTube, do YouTube. There's enough room for all of us. There's enough room for everybody to make money. We don't have to do things like spoil and cheat and and tease because then it gets out to the masses. Um, so, you know, this this uh, Dylan stuff was spreading like wildfire Tuesday. And uh, everybody was finding out the identity of virus and the identity of Codex on Tuesday night. And uh, I think that's unfortunate if you were trying to tell a story and this was like the moment that you were like really waiting to reveal something, let's be honest that Donnie's been teasing what's the end game for Dylan for a long time for this to be the payoff. Um, and then it to get spoiled kind of early. And I really, yeah, I, it, here's the thing, Brian, if I believe that it was for, um, to really to help investors or speculators, that'd be one thing. I think it's done for website clicks and YouTube clicks ultimately and social media clout. I think that's what a lot of times the spoiling gets done for. Yeah, I agree. I no doubt. I think it's down. Will it ever stop? We all know that that's not going to be, no. it's, it's just as much as part of the hobby right now as everything else that makes up the hobby. Um, and the, I'm sure there's also people like we think it's a down i'm sure there's the other side that enjoy it, especially with yeah head start that head run like you said for speculation and investing lets them know oh this is happening they know what if there's back issues that pertain to this to go back and get those back issues tried it's all about first to market when you're talking about speculation and and uh it definitely helps them out so 
I, I agree with you. I think it's down just from a comic reader point of view, especially if you get spoiled it and you're invested in the storyline. And I can see how Donnie Cates writing it is like, hey, he wants to create this big buildup for people to go to the stores, pick it up, and get that look on yeah. their face. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, he wants but, that moment. But, yeah, that's something also – Let you, you watching this video, let us know in the comments. What are your thoughts on that? But the last one we talk about for the three down – this was one that we talked about. We've talked about this as hot before. And I think this is also just attrition of the pandemic, the COVID and everything that's been going on. It's kind of lost its luster and we just had a new trailer for it, but we're talking about WandaVision. Yeah. I expect people to get mad at us for this pick, right? This, this isn't cold. This isn't, that's why this is not the hot and cold show. This is simply a property that should be skyrocketing upwards with that teaser trailer. And let's be honest, kind of. I just think the star's not shining as bright as it was. Yeah, but it kind of makes no sense. And I I sort of think we live in a 24-hour news cycle in comics. When Times 12. Right. And when this got announced, I hate to say it, but or when the when this debuted the 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 teaser, I think it kind of falls around the time people started focusing on this venom stuff. And all I'm seeing posted is venom, 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 venom. And I think that's what happens. So we're so focused in this direction, we're not paying attention here. There probably should be spikes happening with WandaVision right now. We should probably be seeing natural spikes. Yeah, um, or they're going after Mandalorian. Which is another key possibility. And I certainly can't fault anybody because certainly that trailer was awesome. Yeah. But you're guessing. <laughs> Let me yeah, tell you, Mandalorian, I mean, Mandalorian is, whoo, that's a dice roll spec game. That's not my type of spec. I don't like that type. I'm not, I know people who are good at that. That's not me. I like the more, we can all see it coming. I'm just going to be earlier than you. Um, But, and I'll wait you out. Uh, That's more my style. But, uh, so that's why I like WandaVision. Because, right, it's, we already know so many of the keys that are going to be relevant. And a lot of them, um, I still think there's room to grow. I think there's a lot of room to grow because again, we don't, we're basing a lot of our knowledge of what the value of this is on Netflix, on the Netflix Daredevil series, on Netflix. Nah, buddy, you and I have said this Mandalorian. That's, this is Disney plus. This is a bigger budget. This is Feige. I also think it's partially just because there's been kind of a gap within the MCU. I mean, you're used to getting stuff coming. I agree. The whole gap that's kind of like you said, the shiny object or whatever, but We've had a gap. This is coming up, but people are still kind of like, meh. But I think if this, you know, once it hits and people start watching it, and if it's actually good, and we already know Feige said how much these shows are going to tie to the overall MCU, I think there's going to be stuff there, and people are going to start buying up books after that again. Yeah, I mean, and at the end of the day, we're going to get this in 2020. So this isn't some huge long-term play. Um, I know a lot of people always, one of the things, uh, we love long-term plays. We love long-term um it allows you to play collector and, and then anytime you can kind of be collector and whether it's investor or speculator, you insert your own and um, you, you can kind of play in both worlds and, and, and get, keep the enjoyment in it. Um, but I know a lot of you out there get impatient and don't love our long-term stuff. This is one of those short-term plays uh, where I think that there's buying opportunities right now that if this show is good, that's it. That's all you need. If this show is good, a book you buy today could three months from now be double the value or more. Right. It's almost like reminds me of what is it like Marvel's version of like bewitched. Right. 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 Yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's the other thing, right? It's these, so like the trailers and the, the advertising has been so different. Yeah. I think people haven't known how to project it. Yep. I'm excited to watch it for sure. Me too. Me too. But there it is, guys. There's our three up, three down for this week. Let us know in the comments. What do you guys think is up? What do you guys think is down? What do you think about our picks? I'm sure you guys will let us know. But with that being said, this is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. It got me stone cold.